1962, Peter Snell, by 1962, wasn't just the best 800-metre runner in the world. He'd also set a new world record for the most glamorous distance of them all, the mile. And that record had belonged, of course, to the greatest middle distance runner Australia had ever produced. Herb Elliott was unbeaten over 1,500 metres and the mile, with world records in both. But, of course, you didn't like um, being compared to Herb Elliott all the time. <laughs> and, well, in fact, you're quoted in 1964 as saying, uh, everybody ex you know, expects so much and I'm sick to death of having the name Herb Elliott thrust at me. What do I have to do to get rid of this image? Did you, did you feel at the time you lived in his shadow a bit? Well, yes, and, uh, and the, the mystique of Herb <laughs> Elliott has persisted. <laughs> and uh, just about anyone that you, you would ask about uh, Mild Greats, Herb Elliott's name still comes up. First. And of course the debate still rages today over who would have been the king of the mile had you met at your peaks. So we asked Herb Elliott, we said to Herb Elliott, Herb, we said, <laughs> this is the man who's now Director of Athletics and Corporate Relations for the Australian Olympic Committee, right, right. we said, what, we asked him what he thought the result would be if you two had met at your peak and here's his answer, remember this bloke's Australian. I often get asked about you know, what would have happened if I kept running after 1960 and we competed against one another in the Olympic Games in 1964. And I just say simply, I would have tanned your ass, man. But of course, I don't know. All I know is it would have been one hell of a race between the two of us. And I also know that I have looked up to you as a fantastic athlete, a person of quiet strength, a great role model.